Hey and welcome back to FreePhotoshop.com and video number 22 in this FreePhotoshop.com series on the Levels command. In the previous few videos we've been looking at the RGB and luminance histograms. Now it's time to take a look at that third and final histogram that we're going to reference in this series and that's the colour histogram. On screen here I've got the New York flat ironed image that we've been using whilst looking at histograms. I've also got the histogram palette loaded onto screen here and set to the all channels view so we get a good view of everything that's going on inside the channels of this image. Now sometimes when you're viewing the free colour channels in separate palettes and then seeing the sum of those brightness levels reflected up here in the composite view of the histogram it's not always giving you a clear indication of how these free colour channels are working with each other. Wouldn't it be more visually pleasing to see those free colour histograms placed inside the same palette? Well, you'll see that if I come up here to the channels drop down menu and change it from the standard RGB histogram to the colour histogram down here at the bottom, we're now seeing those free channel histograms displayed inside one histogram window. They're all still completely independent, but we can now see the channels compared with each other a lot easier and certainly a lot more accurately. So here's how we can read it. It's actually pretty standard stuff going on here following on from the color theory inside the RGB color mode we've already talked about a few videos ago. So where the histogram is black or this dark gray color, that's where all three channels exist. The red, green and blue represent the red, green and blue channels. When you see the yellow inside the histogram here, that's where the green and red channels overlap. Where you can see the magenta colour going on here, there's just a tiny bit here, you might be able to see it. Well that's where the red and blue channels overlap. And finally where you can see cyan, that's where the blue and green channels overlap. Okay, just like all the other histograms available here, they're not directly editable from here inside the histograms palette. So to make changes to it, I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer by hitting the keyboard shortcut that we created ourselves earlier on in this series. So that's Control L or Command L on the Macintosh. Actually, I'm going to cancel out of here for just a second so I can show you something before we do that. I'm going to hit Control K and then Control 4 that's Command K, Command 4 on the Mac, to view our Preferences um, dialog box loaded up with the Performance settings. And just note that I've taken the Cache level down to 1. And then I had to restart Photoshop for this change to take effect. OK, I just wanted to show you that so you know why the histogram is updating every time without me using that Refresh button after every change we make inside the image. OK, I'm going to come out of here and then just bring up that levels adjustment layer once again by hitting Control or Command L. And look what happens when I move, say, the black point slider to shift around some of the shadows inside the image. We're seeing all of those channels move inside one histogram. And we can pretty much do whatever we like now and see the results as they happen. So we can see the results on a channel by channel basis on the fly inside this histogram window. And I'm going to show you where you're going to find this variation of the histogram an awful lot here inside of Photoshop. And it's inside a plugin that comes along with Photoshop called Camera Raw. Now, previous to Photoshop CS3, if you wanted to use the Camera Raw plugin, you had to be working with raw images. But now, here inside of Photoshop CS3, you can open and edit, amongst others, JPEG images inside the Camera Raw plugin. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to cancel out of levels and then just hit Control or Command W to close this image. Then I'll hit this little bridge icon to open up Adobe Bridge. Now I'm going to right click on this very same photograph that we opened up inside Photoshop a few moments ago, which of course is in the JPEG format. And then I'm going to select from that context sensitive right clicking menu that we brought up. I'm going to go ahead and click the Open Inside Camera Raw Plugin command. And that goes ahead and opens up the Camera Raw Plugin. And over here at the top right hand side of the Camera Raw Plugin window, we get to see the color histogram, identical to the histogram that we were looking at inside of Photoshop. 
and I say inside Photoshop because we're actually still inside the bridge. The bridge is hosting this plugin for us rather than Photoshop. So that's a, a neat little feature that goes on inside the bridge. Now I'll just go ahead and show you quickly how we can make modifications to the levels here inside the Camera Raw uh, plugin and see the results reflected on the fly inside the color histogram up here. All these sliders here make amendments to the brightness and contrast of the image, but for now I'm interested in just these three here. The blacks, the brightness and the contrast. And if we were in Photoshop then I'd say that the blacks represented the shadow slider, the brightness represented the highlight slider, and the contrast did the same job as the midtone slider. So if I start to drag the blacks across, then we're seeing the changes as they happen inside the histogram. And we can also click this little button here, this little triangular shaped button, to show us where inside the image each channel is clipping. You can also see as I move it around a little more, that the arrow is switching colours to whatever channel I'm clipping. So it's actually illustrating which colour inside our image is clipping, which I'd say is a pretty helpful feature. OK, I'm going to bring these blacks back a bit, just to the point of where we don't get any clipping. We don't want that little triangle turning red on us. So a value of 22 looks good here. Next I'll shift the brightness slider up a touch, uh, say to a value of around about 3. We want a pretty subtle amendment there, and that looks pretty good. Finally I'm going to increase the contrast up to a value of say around about plus 20. And that's starting to look good actually. And we can see all along the way just how these channels are handling the changes that we're applying. In fact, if we look at this triangle here, it's telling me that when we made the final contrast adjustment, we ended up slightly pushing out the shadows and therefore it's giving me a warning that some of the pixels are clipped. So I'll just reduce that shadow slider by just a couple of notches here and we're good to go. And just in case you've still got these clipped shadows being shown on screen here, we can switch that off by toggling the button up here at the top of the histogram. Okay, before we call it a day, let me show you a before and after view of the image. So here's what the image looked like when we first entered Camera Raw. And here's the final image. Once again, here's a before view and here's an after view. So you can see just how much of a difference you can make with just playing around with these controls and keeping an eye on not only the image but the histogram too. Okay that wraps up our conversation on Photoshop histograms. In the next video we're going to take a look at the LAB color mode that allows us to split color and luminance information to separate channels inside of our images. Make sure you join me for that one. In the meantime, thanks for watching this video right here at freephotoshop.com and I'll see you in the next tutorial.